Hello everyone. In this video pronunciation lesson, I want to talk about thought groups. Before watching this video, please download the classroom worksheet from our virtual classroom. And of course, you may want to watch this video more than one time while you're doing the work. By watching this video, I want us to understand thought groups so that we can, one, divide the stream of speech into thought groups, and two, understand how thought groups help listeners process what is being said. So what are thought groups? They're meaningful groups of words organized by speakers. They are marked by intonation and or pausing. Fluent speakers organize their speech into chunks called thought groups. They do not speak word by word. Of course not. They have a natural flow of speech. They do not speak word by word. So let's talk about those three things, chunking, intonation, and pausing, because they are all important for understanding thought groups. First, chunking. We can chunk um, speech into several different types of logical thought groups. The first are short sentences. I have to study. Where did I put my book? Short sentences can be thought groups by themselves. For longer sentences, we might break them in clauses or phrases. For clauses, you might have, for example, if you speak in thought groups, you'll be easier to understand. And then for phrases, Steve Jobs dropped out of college after six months. Some other chunking comes with transitions, single word expressions, or multi-word combinations. For transitions, uh, single words or phrases like, in fact, or however, or on the other hand, will signal a thought group. In fact, thought groups make you sound more fluent. For common single word expressions, they can also be grouped in thought groups. Well, I heard from Kate. Yeah, I heard from Kate. Um, I heard from Kate. Common multi-word combinations also make thought groups. What I'm trying to say is, I lost my economics book. Intonation and pausing are also very important for thought groups. Changes in intonation with the pitch, the volume, the length on focus words signal thought groups. Remember that falling pitch is usually declaring or giving information, and rising pitch usually signals uncertainty or surprise or a yes-no question. Pauses also help guide the listeners. You will hear pauses especially when native speakers give numbers, a series of numbers. A native speaker would have trouble understanding a set of numbers without pausing. So we typically speak in chunks. Here's an example below. Hello, this is 707-555-7575. I can't answer the phone right now, but please leave a brief message and I'll return your call as soon as I can. Notice the chunking, the intonation changes, and the pausing. Hello, this is 707. 555-7575. I can't answer the phone right now, but please leave a brief message and I'll return your call as soon as I can. In written English, we use punctuation like commas, periods, dashes, parentheses to signal ends of thought groups. But in spoken English, we use our voice to signal thought group boundaries with chunking, intonation, and pauses. Thanks for watching the video. Please complete the worksheet before our next session. See you soon.